Josh, it's actually a pretty good day. Uh, all right. Actually, I was thinking about leaving too. Um, hey, so guys, I was originally thinking we weren't going to do this <clears throat> just for the sake of time, but I'm realizing it's probably a really good way to spend the next 90 seconds. Um, so guys, I know it's the end of the quarter. I know that things are starting to feel heavy and, and we're in sort of that fight or flight mode right now going, do I dig in and get this done or do I just run away? Um, Guys, please don't run. Um, but with that said, remember that, guys, our deadlines are not Alpine School District deadlines. Um, I would propose these are better because they line up with our unit breaks and they don't have you stressing the last week of the quarter. Um, so, guys, please remember all late homework is due the day that you took the test. Um, for most of you, that's passed. For folks like Joe and Jasmine who have not yet taken the test, you need to have your homework done prior to taking the test. <clears throat> then, guys, um, tests are obviously done. And what that means is the only thing we can do, if you missed a test from previous units, we're probably talking. If we're not, we should be. Um, but guys, if you're, if you're up to speed on what we're doing relative to this test, remember the remediation is Monday. <clears throat> Essentials test is Thursday. Um, remediation will be in here. Um, and then guys, the only other thing we really have to talk about is lab work and extra credit. Um, please guys remember that those things are both due uh, Friday at 2.45. That is non-negotiable. Um, and so Friday at 2.45, all of your lab work, including papers, the rewrites of the phase change lab, if you chose to do that, the conclusions, all of that is due <clears throat> um, on Friday. And then the extra credit is due as well. So guys, here's the thing I can tell you to sort of give you a sense of where you are. Uh, you probably noticed that I entered your test scores into Skyward before I gave them back to you. And if you're paying attention, I never do that. I always enter them after you get them back so that we can talk and you don't just see that score and, and base your assumptions on that. Um, but guys, I entered them into Skyward because I was trying to honor your time and I know that some of you are playing the grade game and you're trying to figure out whether or not to do the extra credit. So I entered your scores early so that you could see where you were so you could see whether or not extra credit would be helpful. Guys, this is the thing I can tell you. Your grade can't go down. There's nothing lurking in the background relative to third quarter. So guys, if you look on Skyward and you're like, yeah, I'm good, you're good, you're done. Um, they can't go down. Um, if that's not the case, again, guys, lab deadline is Friday and then remediation if you qualify for that. So I think that was a good way to spend a couple minutes. Any thoughts or questions relative to that? Y'all good? Okay. So guys, what you need to do is grab your note-taking materials. Let me get rid of this. Let me grab a hold of this. Let me double click on this. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna go here and here. And guys, <laughs> what do they say about the shoe? <laughs> the shoemaker's children have no shoes. <laughs> Ah! Uh. <laughs> this actually brings me quite a bit of joy because I get to throw things at you. Oh. Who else? Come on, K9. You need a calculator just because I. Do you need one? Oh, I'm so glad. Anyone else? Come on, Mila. Tell me you need a calculator. Shoot. Anyone else? You guys done? All right. Hey, so guys, the date today is March 2nd. The date today is the 2nd, and the topic for your notes today is on the screen. As you write down the word significant figures or significant digits, some of you are going to start to develop a little bit of an eye twitch because you're like, oh, shoot. I remember kind of doing that back in September. Maybe I remember that significant digits communicate accuracy in measurements. And if you're really pushing the boundaries, you might even remember there are four rules for significant digits. Non-zeros count, final zeros after the decimal count, trap zeros count, and nothing else counts. 
So guys, we just did our significant digits review. You do not need to know this today. I will formally put it up on the screen in a minute, but I probably won't even give you time to write it down. Um, the bottom line, guys, is if you don't remember significant digits, you need to go back in the calendar to those days at the end of at the end of August and the beginning of September when we went over this, and you need to refresh your memory. Yeah, that's on you. Um, so, guys, understand that when you walk in here on Friday, the assumption is that you have refreshed your brain enough on significant digits that, that you remember how to do this. So guys, we'll do that for a couple seconds and we will look at a couple examples just to get the juices flowing. But guys, the remainder of our day is gonna be all about formula mass. Um, this is going to be a great bridge between the test that you just took and where we're headed into this next unit. And guys, it's all about calculators. Chemistry is about to become mathematical and frankly a lot more interesting, um, but the, the changes are coming. So here we go, you ready? Boom and boom, that's it. I'm not gonna shoot a picture if you want, but guys, we are not going to give you the time to write this down. Um, I don't know that August 24th is actually the date that we did this. Frankly, I did that last year and forgot to change it sometime in August. Um, but guys, this is significant digits, they're, they're digits the communicate accuracy. There are four rules. And then mathematically, remember that when we are rounding answers, uh, when we are uh, multiplying and dividing, we round to the least accurate factor, a few significant digits. When we're adding and subtracting, we uh, round to decimal places. So guys, this is unlike me, but I'm not gonna entertain questions. I'm not gonna ask what you wanna talk about because it's too early. You need to go back and you need to review this stuff and then when I see you on Friday, we'll, we'll turn the dials a little bit and we'll fine tune. Um, and then we're just gonna use these with the assumption that we know them. Um, so guys, with that said, maybe we could do this in the next three or four minutes. Um, guys, let's just, let's, let's test for echoes a little bit. If you have no idea how to do this, that's, we'll, I'll actually do the first one with you to remind you. Um, but guys, I'm gonna ask that you spend just a couple seconds and, and, and let's use this as a measure. So if you can do this right now, you don't need to review, you're good. If you can't, that's simply a message to you that you need to review. So guys, I'm gonna do the first one with you and then I'm gonna give you a couple seconds to do the rest. So guys, do this with me, um, just mentally to make sure you understand what's going on. So guys, we've got this number, 314.700. The three, the one, the four, and the seven are significant because those are not zeros. But then guys, from there, there are only two types of significant zeros. Final zeros after the decimal and trap zeros. Are those zeros either one of those two? Are they trapped? No, they're not trapped, but Michael's saying confidently yes and he's right. Which are those zeros? Final zeros after the decimal. Guys, final means at the end. After the decimal means after the decimal. A negative example of that is this. This is final, but it's not after the decimal. So, and then a negative example of the other is this. This is at, well, there we go. This is after the decimal, but it's not final. So guys, that one on the left, it counts as both final and after the decimal. So how many significant digits are in that number? Six. So you could just write the number six up above it <clears throat> to tell you that that's six significant digits. Then guys, from there, the number four in parentheses is asking you to round this to four. And the way to do that is you go one, you go two, you go three, and you go four. So we're gonna round to that place. So then the question becomes, what do we do with the zeros? And guys, remember the rule. If you're rounding a number that's below the decimal place, you chop the places off. You don't replace, you remove. So guys, this rounded, to four significant digits would be that. Let me give you, literally by the clock, two minutes to do the rest of these in your notes. Then we'll go through and we'll do these together. Um, answering questions along the way, but not fully reteaching because you haven't reviewed yet. And then guys, it's gonna take 11 more minutes to cover the rest of the material today and you're gonna get your homework done.
Jesse, I brought my mug. Well, I'm still drinking coffee right now, but soon. What? No, I'm going to go to the drinking fountain. Oh, it is. At Timpanogos, you guys struggle, but we have good drinking fountains here. Is that? Hi. Oh, you're. <laughs> I didn't know if you were enjoying. Do you want to learn about significant digits? I can't say anything to you. That's fair. All right. <clears throat> and hey, guys, while we're at this, let's not even do this one. I don't want to take the time to explain it. We'll talk when it becomes important. What, Jess? The one above it? Oh, shoot. Does that one? No, that one's fine. That one we can do. We'll talk. There it is. The light came on. So guys, we're looking at about 30 more seconds. Again, the goal here is not for you to be proficient. The goal here is for you to figure out you're not proficient. Proficiency comes by reviewing. Can we do it? So guys, let, let's, let's call that quits, whether you're done or not. Um, let's let as much as you got done be your measure of where you, at, where you are at with this material. Um, so guys, I'm going to do this relatively quickly, but I, I am happy to slow down if we need to talk about things. But guys, talk to me about those zeros. Are they trapped? Matt, make sure you're catching this. Are they trapped? No. no. Are they final zeros after the decimal? No. So how many significant digits are in this number? Well, there's four. The one, the seven, the seven, and the five. Um, so guys, this has got initially four significant digits. What we're being asked to do is we're being asked to round to two. So I actually, at least mentally, but physically in front of you, I like to sort of find where my significant digits are that I'm rounding to. Um, draw dots if you want. But then, guys, at this point, we look at the next digit, and that's the second seven, which tells us to round up. So, guys, that brings us then to point zero zero one eight. So then the question is, what do we do with the seven and the five? Do we replace them with zeros, or do we cut them off? Well, guys, let me show you the wrong answer. We do not replace them with zeros. Do you now see why? Those zeros are now significant, and that's four significant digits. So guys, we do not replace them with zeros because those zeros, by definition, become significant. So instead of replacing, we remove, and this would be that to two significant digits. So guys, continuing on then, and you know what, maybe what we'll do is we'll just stop at number three. Um, what about that zero? Significant? Why? Trapped. Good, good, good. Okay. So guys, that is four significant digits. They all count. The zero's trapped. But then what we're being asked to do is we're being asked to round to two. So then we look at the next digit, and that's a nine, so that rounds up. So guys, that leaves us with 81. But now what do we do with the nine and the two? Well, let me show you the wrong answer. The wrong answer is this. Because guys, if you do this, you've just decimated that number. This number is 8,000. This number is 81. That's not rounding. That's destroying the value of the number. So guys, we've got to replace these with zeros um, because we need, to, we need to maintain the integrity of the number. So guys, I'm going to stop there. Um, with this one in scientific notation, you just ignore the exponent and deal with the root of the number. And we'll talk about that last one later. So Alex, I'm realizing you weren't with us back in September to learn this. Were you at Timp View? You were at Mount, have you done this? So go back to wherever that day is in August-ish and uh, watch the screencast. So, all right, so guys, we're gonna move forward. I'm not even gonna ask about questions, but I am gonna ask you to do this. Guys, in your heart of hearts, look at your work on your paper, and if you know you don't know this, you need to address that.
So if I, once you've done your part, if you want to talk, that's fine. Matt, I'm going to need your feet to point in my direction and not Joe's direction. And uh, we're going to get started. Um, so guys, this is where this now becomes new. And um, so we're going to go here and we're going to go here. And guys, this stuff you're going to, well, eh, you're okay. I'll tell you when to start writing stuff down. So guys, today's a transitional day. It's going to be fast. What we're going to do is we're going to take these chemical formulas and names that you had the chance to demonstrate mastery of on the test, and we're going to start figuring out how much these things weigh. So guys, what we're going to do then is we're going to take these masses off of the periodic table. Glance at your periodic tables with me just quickly. What color are the masses on the periodic table? Red and small, right? And those numbers you probably don't remember are in the units, atomic mass units, the mass of a proton, doesn't matter. Um, but guys, those masses in the periodic table are in AMUs. What you're going to do is using that data, you're going to figure out the mass of compounds. So guys, without writing this down, this is the deal. So this is our transitional thought. Looking back at the last unit, you know how to write the formulas for compounds. Moving forward now, you're going to figure out what these things weigh. But along the way, guys, you've got to figure out what these elements or these compounds are made of. That is the concept of composition. So guys, rather than write this down, watch. And if this makes sense, you're gold. So guys, the idea is this, magnesium phosphate. Write that down in your notes. Make it kind of bigger. I think you're going to find this relatively accessible. <clears throat> so guys, magnesium phosphate is obviously made of elements. And guys, you got to understand this. Phosphate is not an element. You don't find phosphate on the periodic table. Where do you find it? The yellow sheet. Those aren't elements. We don't know the masses of the polyatomics because we only know the masses of the elements. So guys, do this. Below where you wrote magnesium phosphate, please write down one on top of the other. Don't go across, go down. Please write down the elements that magnesium phosphate is made of. And guys, if you're thinking to yourself, this is stupid, I can do this, um, please do it. This is, this is headed somewhere. So you should be done. So guys, question for you. How many different elements is magnesium phosphate made of? Can you show me fingers? How many different elements? Do you see the three? Guys, we've got magnesium, we've got phosphorus, and we've got oxygen. So guys, these are the elements. You don't need to write it as detailed as I just did, but the three elements that magnesium phosphate are magnesium, phosphorus, and oxygen. Now the question becomes how many, so let's fill in the blanks. So guys, how many magnesiums do we have in magnesium phosphate? That's the three, right? So guys, we've got three magnesiums in magnesium phosphate. Now we've got to think a little bit, and this is why the parentheses from the previous unit become so important to us. Guys, this two distributes throughout the parentheses. So can you pull this together? How many phosphoruses do we have? Two. There's one in each PO4, but there's two PO4s. Consequently, there's two. Then guys, how many oxygens do we have? We have eight. Okay. So guys, let's pause. If you can do this, you're going to be money for everything that we're doing today. So do you have questions that we can clarify? Yeah. That's how many there are. Yeah. So this, this compound, magnesium phosphate, is composed of three magnesium atoms, two phosphorus atoms, and eight oxygen atoms. Is that okay? And so, Kimball, what you're going to see is just in a minute, we're going to figure out what does magnesium weigh, multiply it by three, what does phosphorus multiply it by two, what does oxygen weigh, multiply it by eight, and add them up, and you're done. That's it. You guys okay? Okay. So, guys, let's do this then. Let's talk about where we're headed with this, and let's take a look at the substance, uh, and I'm just going to tell you what this is, iron-3-sulfate. 
If you're looking at this and going, wait, why is that iron three if there's only two irons? You probably need to go back and review last unit. Guys, the three does not tell you how many, it tells you the charge. And in my brain, I can do the math. Sulfate's minus two times three is minus six. This is plus six divided by two is three. This is iron three sulfate. If you can't do that in your brain, you're fine. But guys, what I would like you to do is this. Looking up at the thing that we did with magnesium phosphate, please do something similar with iron three, with iron three uh, sulfate. How many of each atom is in this salt? Oh, look at us talking like chemists. So guys, my suspicion is at this point, you're either good or you're stuck. Um, so mentally, the first thing that we need to do is identify the fact that this is also made of three different elements. We've got iron, and then we've got the polyatomic sulfate that's made of sulfur and oxygen. Then we need to know how many. Did you guys all identify that this has two iron atoms? And then again, the three distributes through the parentheses, so we have three sulfurs and how many oxygens? A dozen, yeah, is that okay? Okay, so guys, if you overheard the conversation I had with Kimball, uh, you functionally are done. Um, but if you didn't, well, we're gonna be more detailed about this. But guys, all we're gonna do to wrap up the day is we're gonna figure out what iron weighs, sulfur weighs, oxygen weighs, do the math and figure out what iron three sulfate weighs. Along the way though, there are a couple ideas that you need to know and I'd encourage you to write this down in your notes. Guys, make a subheading in your notes and call it formula mass, if you would, please. This is a term that we're gonna use in conversation throughout the rest of the year, so you should understand what it means. So guys, formula masses and molecular masses In your brain, these are going to be interchangeable. In chemistry, they're not. And the difference is this. When we figure out how much a salt weighs, that's a formula mass. When we figure out how much a molecule weighs, that's a molecular mass. And remember the difference. Molecules are covalently bonded and salts are ionically bonded. And so guys, it's really not okay to say what is the molecular mass of NaCl because NaCl is a salt and not a molecule. But functionally, they're the same. But technically, formula masses are salts, molecular masses are molecules. In either case, this is the mass of what we call a formula unit of a compound. And guys, again, a term that you need to know, a formula unit is just the unit of the compound as the formula represents. So a formula unit of magnesium phosphate is Mg. 3PO42. It's the stuff we were just looking at. Don't get caught up in the words. Guys, what you're going to find though is that when we figure these out, we are going to be figuring out these, these formula or molecular masses in the units AMUs, the units that are rated on our periodic tables in red. So we're going to do two of these in the next four minutes and we're going to be done and you're going to get your homework done. Actually, it might be five minutes, but we're almost done. You guys okay? So guys, I know we've sort of done this to death, but please do this with me one more time because now this is taking this full circle. Um, sodium phosphate. Would you please do the work to sodium phosphate that you just did with the magnesium and the iron salts that we looked at a moment ago? Figure out the composition how many of each atom are these made of? And guys, I really would encourage you to spend the time to physically write this down. If you're staring at me rather than pushing a pencil, you're not doing what you should be doing. You guys okay? 
All right, so guys, moving across, we're gonna kinda combine things together here. We not only know that this is sodium, we know that this is three sodiums. Four phosphoruses. Ah, uh, guys, no parentheses, right? Did you see how I sort of led you into this pitfall? Guys, we've already looked at a phosphate salt, but now there's no parentheses. That four does not distribute. There is only one phosphorus. And then let's finish this up. How many oxygens? Good. Okay. Now, guys, what we've got to do, and this is where you're going to have to squint to find the numbers. We need to now know the masses of these, of these atoms. Now, guys, here's the rule. One decimal place you are going to round to one decimal place. So guys, it's been a while since I've looked at my periodic table. Isn't sodium 22.9 something? Is that right? Okay. We're going to round that to 23.0. Because I seriously don't remember phosphorus. It's over on the, le the left. Can you say it again? 30.97, so the 7 rounds the 9 up, so to one decimal place, that would be 31. And then, guys, oxygen, you just sort of know. It's 15.9 and change, but to one decimal place, that rounds up to 16. Okay, so guys, now we're in a position where we can figure out the mass of the compound. So we need to do the math, grab your calculators, or shame on you, grab my calculator. And guys, let's do the math. So three times 23, that's 69. Notice guys that the abbreviation for AMUs changed to a U. U is the abbreviation for AMU, you can use either one. Then guys, one times 31, that's math even I can do. And then guys, four times 16 is 64. Now, in order to figure out the mass of the entire thing, we just add all of those up. Remember, when we are adding, we conserve decimal places, and I get 164 atomic mass, point zero. Point zero is important. Atomic mass units. Questions? You okay? Okay, so guys, let me, we're going to do one more, but here's the deal. When you look at the homework answers, this is what you're going to see. When I put this key together, I spent the time to type the answers up at this level of detail. Guys, please, unless you absolutely have to, please don't do this. This is going to become a glaring waste of time. Guys, today, these masses are sort of the point but you're going to find that starting on Friday, these are a very small piece of a really big puzzle. And if you're spending all of this time to figure this out, your homework assignments are going to take you weeks. So guys, let me show you how to do these more quickly. Understand, the answers say this when you look at the key, but you don't need to do that. What you need to do is this. Guys, do this with me. What I'm about to do with you is exactly what your homework looks like. This is how you're going to do the homework. So guys, you'll notice that we are not given the formula for the salt. But based upon the skills that you learned in the last unit, we can write this chemical formula. So how do we do this? Well guys, chromium is Cr. And we look on the periodic table and we find out that it can have more than one charge. I think it's like two, three, and six or something like that. Oh, look at me. But we didn't even need to do that because the Roman numeral tells us it's plus three. And then, guys, we need to find sulfate. It's an eight and not an ide, so it's on the yellow sheet. Sulfate is SO4 and its charge is minus two. Guys, this is the first section of the test you just took. Now we need the least common multiple. Three and two meet up at six. That means that we need, I'll just do it here. We need two chromiums and we need three sulfates and that would be chromium three sulfate. Guys, if you can't do this, you need to do the remediation. We're not going to spend the time right now to talk you through it. But if you can't do this, I'm sorry if this sounds harsh, you have an issue. 
You've got to figure these out. I'd love to help. Watch the remediation video. You got to figure this out. This is not something that's going to go away. So guys, this then is how we're going to move on from there. Um, I'm going to get a clean screen and we're going to do this together just to show you the process. You, you can still do it in your paper, but I want to be able to write this so that you can see it better. So guys, chromium three sulfate is just a second. Chromium-3 sulfate is Cr2SO43. Yeah? Did I do that right? Oh, good. All right. So, guys, this is the way you're going to do this in homework. You're not going to go two chromiums, three sulfurs, 12 oxygens. Check this out. Find chromium on your periodic table. Do this with me. Find chromium on your periodic What does it weigh to one decimal place? 52.0, is it zero? Oh good, it makes it 50. Okay, so it rounds to 52.0. But guys, how many of them are there? Can you do 52 times two in your head? Yeah, so would you just do this with me and write it like this? Guys, this is the way chemists do this. You just write the masses up above the elements. So two times 52 is 104. Now guys, sulfur, I actually know that one. Sulfur is 32.1, right? Can you check it? It's right below oxygen. Is it 32.1? But guys, how many sulfurs are there? There's three. Can you do that in your head? 32.1, and if you need your calculators, grab them. But I'm think. no, my head's 96.3. Is that right? Guys, please, I don't know if you know right now, I've got these weird lingering health things that are going on and my head is just like, Aah. I can barely do math. So if you see me do something dumb, it's not because I'm being funny, it was just dumb. Um, please correct me. Um, and then guys, I'm pretty sure I can't do 16 times 12 in my head. Can you help me? Okay, but maybe I did that too quickly, so let's make sure I didn't jump to any conclusions. Oxygen weighs 16, but are we in agreement that there's 12 of them, three times four? Okay, now I can tell you right now, I can't add all these up. But guys, did you notice this? I left off the point zeros. Understand I left them off, but in my brain I know they're there because we're really rounding to one decimal place and it's just more efficient if you leave them off. If you need to include them, other because you'll forget them, do. But it goes like this. Can somebody run those for me? Three, nine, two, two, point three. Throw atomic mass units and you're done. Questions or concerns? Okay, that's your homework. That's it. Let me get these in your grubby little paws. You guys know the drill. Um, this is not just today's homework. This is the entire unit's homework. And wow, even with early out Wednesday, you guys have like 20-ish minutes to work on this. Um, guys, um, get as much of this done as you possibly can. Can I recycle for you? Uh, yeah. Look at me being an environmentalist. All right, so guys, um, give me a couple seconds to print the answers. Is that helpful or do y'all just look on your phones? Phones, does anybody, would anyone like me to print these? You okay? Okay, so guys, the remainder of the time is yours to wrap this stuff up. Um, before we do, well, actually, you guys get to work. Joe and Jasmine, I still need to talk with you guys about the test, but let me talk to Mr. Jarrett first. Let me stop recording.